Okay, welcome back. Today we are going into a new unit on graphing, and we're going to start with slope and rate of change. And within the slope and rate of change, uh, we're going to deal with tables today. So I have a highlighter. I've got a lot of different colored pens that I'm going to use. Uh, this document is also attached to school loop, so I recommend that you print it off so that you don't have to write all this, these different boxes and information. So, uh, so let's get started. Let me get my camera set up. All right, there are many different ways that you're going to see slope and rate of change written and described. So the first way is the slope formula. And the slope formula is, for color, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And everybody has heard that before. Uh, but sometimes that gets a little bit confusing. Another way that might be a little bit easier to remember, and everybody, uh, I believe everybody's heard these words, is they both start with R, rise over run. Okay, and the rise over run really just talks about the rise, like you're standing up and down. So your change in your Y's over your run. When you run, you run horizontally, so you're changing your x's, okay? Another way that we're going to describe it is exactly that. We're just going to say that it's really the change in your y values over the change in your x values. And then the third way, uh, and the, or the final way, is I'm going to introduce you to a Greek letter, and this Greek letter is called delta. So it's delta y over delta x. You're going to use this in chemistry, and you're going to use this in physics if you ever take physics. And that just talks about the change, the change in y over the change in x. So all four of these options are just talking about the change in y over the change in x. Let's look at the first one we have down here. It says slope. Determine the slope of the following input-output tables. So when you're finding slope, you are given input-output tables. And input-output tables either have an X and a Y or something that looks like this, N and F of N. And I'm going to tell you right now that this is written in function notation. And we're going to get into function notation later on. But just know that it's out there and just know that it operates the same as X and Y. So for my X's and Y's, I want to determine the slope. And my slope is my change in Y's over my change in X's. So I'm going to see what the change in Y's is. I go from 13 to 10. That's a negative 3. My change from 10 to 7 is a negative 3. And 7 to 4 is a negative 3. My change in X's is 5 to 7, which would be plus 2 from seven to nine, which will be plus two, and from nine to 11, plus two. So my slope here is a negative three over two, or my change in my y's over my change in my x's. As I look at the second table, we have 50 to 35, negative 15, 35 to 20, negative 15, 20 to five, negative 15. My change in my ends, 10 to 20 plus 10, 20 to 30 plus 10, 30 to 40 plus 10. So my slope here would be my change in my y's, negative 15, over my change in my x's, which is 10. But I know that I can reduce this because 5 goes into both of them. So when I reduce it, I get my new reduced slope of negative 3 over 2, which is pretty interesting because this slope, as the exact same slope as the first line, but our values were totally different. Okay, I'd like you to mimic what I did, and I want you to find the slope of the third example here, and then write it down on this line. Bring it into class tomorrow and we'll go over it. I'm gonna move on to the rate of change down here, and, uh, and let's figure out the rate of change. Now the rate of change and the slope are the exact same, except for a couple of things. The slope, where am I? Slope deals with input-output tables. Rate of change deals with 
data tables. So input output tables have an X and a Y. The data tables have words that describe, so hours and onions, bytes and M&Ms. So that is how you know whether you are dealing with a slope or a rate of change. It's just the words that are used, but you do it the exact same way. So let's continue with what we were doing above. So my rate of my change in my Y's from 12 to 24 would be plus 12, 24 to 36 plus 12, and then 36 to 72. Ooh, that's not plus 12, that's plus 36. But let's continue and see what we get. For my hours, plus one to two is plus one. For two to three would be plus one. And then three to six is plus three. Okay, that doesn't match either. So what I need to do, what you're going to need to do, is to come down here and say, all right, my first value is 12 over 1. My second rate of change was 12 over 1 again. They match. My third rate of change is 36 over 3. Now, I see that 36 over 3, and I'm going to see if I can reduce it, because that's what we always want. We want a constant rate of change. And I can. And when I reduce it, 3 goes into 36 12 times, so 12 over 1. So we have 12 over 1, 12 over 1, 12 over 1. It is constant. So our rate of change, ROC, is 12, 12 what? 12 onions for every 1 hour. And that's our rate of change for the fourth example. For the fifth example, we're going to go through the same process. 200 to 185 would be a negative 15. 185 to 170, negative 15. 170 to 195. Wow, that's a big jump. And that's going to be minus 75. You can use your calculator if you need to. For my bytes, we have... Two, 1 to 2 is plus 1, 2 to 3 is plus 1, 3 to 8 plus 5. And I'm going to go through the same process as I did in example number 4. I'm going to go negative 15 over 1, negative 15 over 1. My second set of values, my second rate of change, again, negative 15 over 1. My third set, negative 75 over positive 5. And again, when I go to reduce this one, negative 75 divided by 5, I would recognize that it is negative 15 over 1, because you're going to reduce that fraction, divide by 5. And again, negative 15 over 1, negative 15 over 1, negative 15 over 1. We have negative 15 M&Ms for every one byte. Just a different way to write it. You could write it as a fraction over here, or you could write it like this. Right now, I would like you to try to figure out what your rate of change is for hours and dollars earned. Figure out the slope up here if you haven't already. And then I want you to answer the question, how do you know if you are dealing with slope or rate of change. If you didn't catch it, I talked about it during the video. So watch the video back again and come up with your answer for how do you know if you're dealing with slope or rate of change. Tomorrow in class, we will go over these three questions. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great night.